Hi, this is Sandra. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm working with a 5x7 landscape photo that's black and white. It is the companion page to Sweet Dreams. I will list that below. And these are the two pages side by side. One in progress, one done. <laughs> anyway, I don't want the companion page to look the exact same, but I do want to pull over a lot of the colors that are in this page. Um, and use the same cardstock. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is take off the white border. I don't want that border competing against this ruby red or ruby red slipper mat that I want to use. I love this color. It looks great against black and white photos. And I kind of went back and forth with these two card stocks from Cuddle Girl, the one with the horses and the one with the flowers, uh, which one would be the background page. This particular page is from Chamel's True Stories or Starshine, I believe, Starshine. I wanted to use that for my journaling page. So this is me flip-flopping back and forth between the ponies and the flowers. And I end up going with the flowers. And I wanted to use some of the ponies, so I made a little strip for the side. I really like this journaling card. I have a lot to say this time around. So I want to use the center of this Starshine cardstock from Chamel for my journaling. And I'm thinking of putting a lot of layers underneath that 5x7 photo. But um, even while I'm cutting them out, I'm thinking, mm, that's, that's a lot. That might be too much. And everything looks very light um, in the background. So I started to stain all the edges with some Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz Distressor. And I did all the edges with that. So that pink is the background page for the companion page or sister page. So I'm pulling that over. And I really like how the dark pink looks against the flowers. It helps the pink and the flower cardstock to pop up a bit more. And since this photo's a little large, um, I'm not as concerned with centering it for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and it probably has more to do with how um, my daughter's face is angled to the right. So having maybe more space on the right side doesn't um, seem like such a bad idea. I don't know. It's interesting when you start looking at, you know, photo placement because these two photos could have gone on one page, but I, I think they, the photos are so beautiful. They like deserve their own page, <laughs> even though they're part of the same story. Um, my husband was taking a photo class, a photography class, um, at a college and, uh, my daughter was his subject, and so um, she loved being home when he was home, being his little uh, his little model. <laughs> he got an A in that class, too. I don't know if it was because she was too cute or he was really that good. Personally, I think he was that good because we have some great shots. All the really great pictures of her <laughs> as a child during this time, my husband took. <laughs> That, that sounds funny, but I'm the one, when I take pictures, for some reason, my thumb would end up in, in view. I, I don't know. It took me a while to really learn how to take pictures, and I'm still learning. But a lot of my, my old pictures uh, <laughs> are pretty bad, but I'm going to scrapbook them anyway, because it's the memories, it's the story. I look at the photo and I see more of uh, 
the story in the photo and what happened at that time in our lives than all my photography mistakes. Now I'm more into trying to to take better photos. Back then, I guess I wasn't really thinking about that. I wanted to capture the moment. And sometimes those moments are a little blurry. <laughs> but I still, you know, have some of them anyway. When I'm I will actually scrapbook some of those blurred moments, but I actually have some uh, really good photos from that same moment, but I can't part with that picture for some room. Anyway, that's another story, another layout, another, another video. But let's get back to this one. That sheet is from, I think, Chanel's True Stories, I think, but I will list it below. <laughs> and I ended up wanting to pull blue at the bottom of this, just like I have blue at the bottom of the companion page because the colors on this page were a little light and um, it needed something to ground the photos and to also help with centering. And I also took away some of the layers on the side because it was really getting to be too much. And I cut out some of the um, little, like, um, the camera, the snapshot, those little things from Chamel and, and another um, papers that were in my stash, just to add, a, a, I guess, use them as embellishments. And they went really well with this. Sometimes you don't need, I don't know, store brought embellishments, you can use your paper. And they make great embellishments and really add to your layers. Anyway, I really have this habit, and I've done it ever since I started scrapbooking, and it's really hard for me to break it, is to lay out practically my entire page before I start putting anything down. And I think because I've always done it that way, now that I'm trying to break that habit, it's really hard. Um, I haven't broken it yet, as you can see. Even though I'm very much committed to what's going on at the bottom and what's going on at the top, I'm not laying it down and making it permanent as I go along because I still want to see you know, where this is going. And I'm separating my title, Isabella, Life with Isabella. And around my title will go my journaling. And that's me trying to bring over more elements from the other side, the red hearts. Um, it just looks, the red looks too bright for some reason here. I don't know why, but it does. And I feel like I'm trying to force those hearts on here. And it's just not working for me. And, and sometimes it's just like that. When you're trying to bring two, a two-page layout together and... You want to bring certain elements from the other side, it doesn't always work. And this is one of the cases for me that those hearts, as much as I love hearts, no, not this time. So that's me figuring it out again. Am I committed? Hmm, not sure. Yes, I am. Yay, look at that tape runner. Or else this video could go on forever. <laughs> anyway, I like that little house. It's from what collection of? I'm pulling it out now because I can't remember. It's from Chanel American Crafts and it doesn't have a name on it. But it has a lot of neat stuff in there. little pack of houses and bicycles and flowers, all sorts of things. Anyway, so scrapbooking those black and white photos. Um, it's nice to, to take those black and white photos and put them in our, our scrapbooks. Uh, this one isn't actually uh, old. It's not like of my great-grandfather or someone like that. It's my daughter. 
and my husband just chose to do it in black and white or maybe the class he was taking he had to do it that way um, which is probably was more like he had to because they did different techniques in the photography class anyway just because a photo is black and white doesn't mean it needs neutral colors um, black and white looks good with I think the bold colors like like this ruby red or um, turquoise or purple gold um, we could even use a black mat um, this one is with a multitude of colors and it looks great I mean she is indeed um, a little toddler there so uh, you kinda want the page to look a little cute perhaps in this case I do want it to look cute but at the same time any black and white photo that uh, we scrap doesn't have to be on uh, that normal heritage type paper that goes with our old black and white photos. Heritage paper is great. I have some of that uh, in my stock and I'll probably use it on, on some of my photos. But it doesn't mean that um, that's the only thing uh, to use. And when you look at different layouts that people are doing out there, you know, in the online world of scrapbooking, you'll see people do amazing things with black and white uh, photos, and uh, and and even adding uh, mixed media to it is pretty cool. All different colored paint or or whatever. It's just really nice to to experiment with your black and white photos and treat it. I don't want to say just like any other photo, but in a way, yes, uh, you can. Um, no rules. You know, it's your eye that gets to decide whether or not you like what you're looking at. And, uh, you know, to experiment and see exactly what you can do with those black and white photos that you may be hesitating to, to scrapbook. And sometimes, like, I have a couple photos that were my mom's, and they're really, really old, and some of them are cracked. So I don't want to scrapbook that original. So what I did is I copied it or took a picture of it, and then I'll scrapbook the new, the new copy of it. Um, at least that's what I'm thinking. But even after I said that, or while I'm saying it, I'm thinking, hmm, it might be nice to scrapbook the original. But I, sometimes you don't want to do that, because that original photo, um, you might want to make a copy of it one day. You know, other of that original. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens when I get there. <laughs> but I am enjoying scrapbooking these uh, black and white photos that I have. And... I'll continue to do a series of black and white photos because I have a bunch of them. I like this fun foam uh, to lift things up with and uh, I tend to put them like separate it like that because I am always thinking I might want to stick something underneath the photo. So if I put it all the way across, I might not be able to stick something on the ends or I'll have to pull it up. And even though I'm putting a couple layers here, the fun foam, <laughs> can't talk, my fun foam isn't really thick. It's not super thick. It's um, thin enough to use a layer or two of that and lift up your photos, lift up a mat, separate it as I'm doing here without it sticking up so high that when you put it in your scrapbook it's taking up a lot of space. It's a little higher than a like a pop-up dot. But not much, not much.
And I really like those bright flowers. Um, I used a lot of my 6x6 six six card stock pads for this, uh, these two layouts. I've had them forever <laughs> and I've been trying to use them and this this layout just really helped me uh, dig into those. And these two layouts are a mix match of all different types of um, products, different lines. And somehow it all goes together really, really well, I think. It's a wonder my fingers aren't tapping. I'm going back and forth, back and forth. What am I going to do here? But that's me overthinking it. And I do like how they look side by side. It pulls enough from the sister page to, uh, to make it work. So I am very much so committed to this. So I'm going to take us to super speed uh, until I start my, my journaling. And I do apologize. I think my phone went off back there somewhere. So I uh, turned it off. Can you imagine if you could scrapbook this fast in real life? Boy, I would love it. Well, maybe. I don't know, it probably hurt my joints or something. <laughs> Injure myself. Scrapbooking. <laughs> Moving too fast. <laughs> but she has beautiful pages. <laughs> She's up to date on all her photos because she moves so fast. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I'm doing my journaling and I'm talking about how uh, my husband took this class, but also that she's teething. Uh, Isabella, um, whenever she was teething, she never complained, never cried, never fussed or anything, which I thought was pretty good. But she would always put her thumb in her mouth and massage her, her gums or, uh, you know, just rub them to her molars are coming in, lower molars. So um, she's busy massaging her thumbs. And that's the only time her fingers went in her mouth was when she was teething. And here she was at that, I don't know, she was a bit curious about what mommy and daddy did when they were not with her. So we would explain to her that uh, you know, dad went to work, he went to school. Uh, Mommy worked. <laughs> I didn't go back to work, I think, until she was two, so. Yeah. She got to be at the daycare on the campus I worked, so that was really nice. Anyway, the word with, surprisingly, in my journaling, there was the word with. And if I had caught it on time, um, I could have used the with in my title as the word in my journaling, the with in my journaling, W-I-T-H. Oh. Anyway, I didn't notice it until after the fact <laughs> that it was already laid down. And I didn't want to white it out or anything like that. Anyway, this is most definitely the home stretch. Sometimes I don't have this much to say about a, a photo because there are a couple different stories in these photos that I'm telling. Um, but in this case, I, I had a lot to say. And there are such really neat journaling cards out there. Or even writing on a, on a page is nice. Writing on your, 
uh, background paper uh, works. Anyway, those stars are from a very old Creative Memories um, collection called Done With One. It goes with the moon that's on the companion page. And I really want to use these little uh, buttons, but uh, they don't make it to the page. One day I'm going to take out like a group of items that I really want to use and I keep trying to use and put them on a layout, like somehow make it work on a layout. And those little buttons will be one of them. You probably like anything that I haven't used, like those stars in the moon. I've had them forever and I keep saying I'm not going to toss them out or give them away or whatever because um, sooner or later I will use them and that was one of, well, I'm using them. <laughs> So on this page, I use both uh, the little dots and uh, some bling. Kind of mixed it up. And with the bling, I have no, um, I'm not really thinking about where. It's not any sort of a pattern that I'm trying to create with it. I just want to brighten up the page with it. Add a little sparkle. So I'm going to actually start a baby album uh, soon and do that as a series uh, her first year. She's 19 now, by the way, so anyone out there who hasn't scrapbooked their baby pictures, now is your chance. <laughs> Join me. Scrapbook those baby pictures with me. She's actually going to graduate from college. <laughs> in uh, next semester, <laughs> or the following semester, I'm sorry, in like December or something. Yeah, December. <laughs> so it's never too late to scrapbook those baby photos. <laughs> But I don't know why I held on to doing that. I've done other scrapbooks, but I've held those off, I don't know, forever. As you can see, 19 years. That's a long time. <laughs> but anyway, we're coming to the end, and I am searching for baby paper to use for that uh, baby album. In the meantime, you'll get to see pictures of her now and somewhere in between. And all those other fun family photos and friends and, you know, mm. stuff. Anyway, sorry, my phone just went off. I think it went off once before. I thought I turned it off, but it did not go off. Anyway, finished product. Finished layout. Not bad. Here are the two of them side by side. And some stills. And thank you so very much for stopping by and seeing my videos. And uh, like, subscribe, and I do hope I get to see you again next time. Have an awesome day.